As sportsmen and women, we spend an awful lot of time in the outdoors and in the elements. Rain, sleet, wind. I know, it sounds like we work for the post office. But too much sun exposure and UV rays can be really dangerous. Hi, I'm Larry Ladowski from Midwest Outdoors, and today's segment is gonna be a little bit different because I wanna talk to you about something that's very important to me and really hit home in the last couple of weeks, and that's skin cancer. Joining me today is board-certified Dr. Kelly Bergring. Dr. Skin cancer is nothing to really take lightly, is right. it? No, not at all. No, I mean, I do probably about 20, 25 skin exams a day. And yes, um, many of those patients, we either diagnose with skin cancer or are coming in for follow-up from their skin cancer. More popular these days or? It definitely has increased in incidence over the years, especially melanoma. Melanoma has doubled in the last several decades. Is skin cancer hereditary at all? Melanoma can be um, if you have a family that makes a lot of atypical or dysplastic moles, um, then yes. What's genetic with basal and squamous cell, which are the most common skin cancers, is pretty much the skin that you were born in. I mean, you know, your parents probably had lighter skin and your brothers and sisters do and this and that. So that's kind of more hereditary in the skin you were born with. I was unaware, I thought skin cancer was a surface, but it actually goes into the under of the skin as well. Right, yeah. So the type of skin cancer you had, basal cell, which a lot of people um, get, 20% of people by the age of 70. So actually very common. And a lot of times I tell patients, by the time your basal cell is diagnosed, it's, it might have even been there three years, four years, five years, because it kind of grows like an iceberg underneath the skin very slowly. May being Skin Cancer Awareness Month, yeah. which is ideal, and the key to that is early detection, correct? Correct, yeah. I myself have a history of melanoma. I had it in 2017. It was just a little baby black freckle, no bigger than a pencil head eraser, smaller than that actually, that developed in the crease of the back of my knee. I caught it early. I was a stage one, which has a 99% survival rate at five years. So yes, it makes a much bigger deal, especially with melanoma, detecting it early. How often should we get checked? So American Cancer Society says after the age of 40, once a year, um, after you have a skin cancer, your um, the times that you come in per year increase. So after a basal or squamous cell, you're supposed to be seen twice a year for at least two years. Okay. I know as, as I get older, you know, you get more oh, yeah. moles, more right. it's marks on your skin. Is there something that we could look at as, yeah. as consumers that would be easier to, to detect? The two biggest points I tell people is if you have a pimple that's not healing after two months, it may not be a pimple. Um, in a black freckle. So like someone took a Sharpie and just dotted you with it. You know, um, brand new um, or a mole that's changed, just very dark, very flat. Those are the two biggest concerns. Sunscreen obviously is right. a key factor. Right. Um, SPF 30, SPF 70, SPF 100. Do these work after 30? I was told they, that they don't. <laughs> they, they do a little bit more. So, so usually an SPF 30, with normal application where people apply it somewhat thinly is an SPF 15. So if applied correctly, which is like a big shot glass for the whole body, SPF 30 blocks 98.6% of the sun's rays okay. when applied correctly, you know? So, and we already established most people don't. Um, so when you get to an SPF 50 or 100, those block more like 99.4. So it's not, double by any means. 98.6 to 99.4 isn't double, but it, it gives you a, like a little baby a little, amount of protection. A little yeah. extra. Right. You don't just apply it once and you're good oh, for no. the day. Yeah. Sweating it off, being at a beach, the sand, the towel. I mean, it takes it all off. So, Which brings us into fishing and yeah. we're constantly around water or ice. Right. The reflections are constantly going. Right. We're taking fish off, put it in the water, your hands right. are going in. Do you right. have to reply, apply after that? or? I mean, not every time. I mean, most of them have some sort of water resistance. I mean, at least every two hours, you know? And if it's in water a lot, I would do every hour. Since if you haven't done the correct usage of sunscreen, is it a waste? I mean, am, am I already infected for well, the next 20 years? Or? It's better than nothing. And, you know, <laughs> it's all helpful. And aging. It's just, I mean, you know, sun just disintegrates collagen. So using sunscreen every day is awesome at helping prevent 
skin cancer skill still and aging. We have many different companies making protective clothing. Yep. Hook's one of them, Sims, Realtree, Blackfish, and a new company that I found out from the surgeon yeah. was Coolabar. Yeah. Now, a lot of these places are making SPF within the fibers of right. the clothing. Does that replace sunscreen or? It does um, with these tight, because it basically depends on the tightness of the weave. Underneath that, you are not gonna get burned, you know, or tan. So um, now a simple t-shirt, especially like a white, lightly woven t-shirt is like an SPF of four. You can easily get burned through that, you know? So that does replace where you're covered. I wanna thank Dr. Kelly Bergeron for joining us. And just as a recap, Number one, get skin checks regularly. May is a perfect time to do it. Two, wear your sunscreen and apply regularly. Correct. And three, purchase some quality outdoor clothing. It'll help you in the long run and you'll be much safer. I'm Larry Ladowski. More Midwest Outdoors is right around the corner. We'll catch you later and be safe out there.